Today, we're going to be talking about a couple really significant factors that could shape up 2024 and 2025 to be some very difficult years for people that are in podcasting. Personally, I'm going to attribute this to some industry corrections that are just naturally happening after the pandemic bubble, but also an iOS update from Apple that's really going to screw a couple people over. Welcome to another episode of Catching You Up With... Nadal, here's go wait. I would like to thank the executive producer of this episode, David Finkel. Without his help, I would probably be snatching up Shane Gillis tickets on his normal comedy club site and then reselling them for about 20 times face value to unsuspecting fans. But because of David Finkel, I don't have to do that. And if you would like to become an executive producer of this show, go ahead and click the Patreon link in the description below. And if you're not going to do that, at least comment, rate, subscribe, share this with a friend. It all helps the algorithm. So this episode is going to have two parts to it. And the first part, I'm going to be talking about the industry correction to the bubble that was created by the pandemic. So when COVID first kind of became a real thing, all of us were scrambling. I know I was paranoid that we were going to be locked out of our business park in Reseda, where we recorded out of in Los Angeles. But an article came out that listed podcasts as an essential service, which was included with news broadcasts, supermarkets, and hospitals. And this article didn't distinguish news podcasts from dick and fart joke podcasts. Podcasts literally became the only form of consistent content that people that were forced to stay at home could consume. I remember the pandemic became real for me when they were like, hey, we're canceling basketball. Shit, we're canceling sports? Okay, this is a real thing then, okay. But everyone was forced to stay home and there was very little that they could do to entertain themselves. Podcasts became the main squeeze for a lot of people. And it's because podcasts were allowed to continue on a consistent basis. Our team was about three to five people at the time. We weren't doing as many podcasts. And honestly, we just kind of had policy like, hey, don't fuck around. We can't afford for someone to get COVID and then be out for two weeks. Even though that happened pretty regularly as soon as someone healed up from it, someone else caught it. But fuck it, dude. ABP. Always be producing we don't miss uploads but sure there were still other forms of entertainment you could be watching like the news but you know that was kind of a real bummer and yeah i couldn't hang out with my friends for a really long time but you know what i could do that i felt really lucky i was able to go into work monday through friday and hang out with my friends at work and I'm thankful that we were able to continue to operate. And to be clear, the entire world shutting down was one of the catalysts for the podcast explosion. That was the only form of content that, for the most part, people could enjoy on a weekly basis. This explosion in growth was, I, I mean, it was like it was like growth on steroids. All of a sudden, everyone's getting fucking crazy fucking delts. They're getting a, like a kind of a gut, but there's a six-pack gut. They're getting fucking tennis ball biceps. Shit's unnatural, but holy shit, did we look fucking jacked. <laughs> Business-wise, the pandemic was devastating, but if you had an online presence, you could really take advantage of the fact that there are people at home just looking to consume things, whether it be content, whatever it is. Advertising sponsors for podcasts really started ramping up their spending as they realized that the most consistent place that they could advertise on was podcasts. But here's a big mistake that a lot of podcasts made and a lot of ancillary businesses that revolve around podcasts. This new inflated number caused by the pandemic is now the new baseline for podcasting. We are now in the middle of a big correction to that podcasts are king mentality. When podcasts were the main form of entertainment that was being consumed the most, it made sense for advertisers to dump a lot of their marketing budgets into those. Audio platforms were trying to get bigger market shares of podcast audio listeners like Amazon's Wondery or Spotify or, you know, a whole bunch of other like ancillary ad agency companies that promised their new podcast roster the world and offered them signing bonuses and minimum guarantees, assuming that podcasts would just go like this, like, 
All we were awaiting was for people to discover podcasts. And the pandemic finally did that. Or did it? Or was podcast just the only option? And it forced everyone to just pick a podcast that they like and started listening to it. But it was the only option. Look, I don't want to stare at a wall for 24 hours a day. Let's call it 16 hours a day because I'm going to sleep, right? Because if staring at a wall is my only option, I'm going to do that. But if you give me a feather, I'm not looking at that wall anymore. I'm going to be fucking playing with this feather for like most of the day. And when I'm tired of that, I'll stare at the wall for like, I don't know, five, 10 minute breaks. And then you know what I'm doing? I'm going back to the feather, baby. But yeah, a lot of these companies were offering signing bonuses and minimum guarantees, which is fucking bananas. There's some companies that could do this, like Spotify, you know? Even some that you have heard of it can't pull it off. And ones that you haven't heard of definitely can't pull it off. Like look at Cast Media, right? That all fell through the cracks. Theo Vaughn, Brendan Schaub, all those people got fucked over sideways by a company that couldn't deliver what they promised. You know, that shit isn't cool. Like, you you can't be an agency that's writing up contracts and then not following the things that you promised. Especially with some of the bigger podcasts that are like, yeah, you think we're afraid to fucking sue you? Or even better, we have a huge fucking platform. You think we can't just announce and megaphone to everyone what a huge piece of shit you are? There's going to be quite a stain on you moving forward. I want to talk about something. Our podcast was defrauded. We were stolen from the company that did it is Cast Media. And the man that did it is Colin Thompson. And I'm going to put his picture in here. Uh, We're part of a larger group of podcasts that were stolen from. Just between talking with folks, there's up to $4 million that I know of that people were taking advantage of. Uh, We're in the six figures. I know of podcasts that are in the seven figures. And Colin Thompson, that's his name. I want to say his name so you know it. But you fuck with the wrong rat, Colin. And I'll just tell you guys what happened. Um, We had a deal with this company, right? And and But as restrictions started to lighten up, movies started being made again. TV shows started being made again. And the things that you could use to entertain yourself are starting to diversify again. You no longer have only podcasts. You could go watch, what's a fucking show that everyone likes? Yellowstone? I don't know. I don't know. What are the kids watching these days? Uh, The White White Lotus? Was that post-pandemic? Secession, right? Secession. There we go. Secession's a good one. Secession came back. And what? Are you going to choose like a podcast that's being shot from the hip? Or are you going to watch the brilliance that is Secession? I'm going to watch Secession. And also, you know, a couple of the podcasts that I really like. But I'll tell you what, all the podcasts that I listened to dwindled back down to what I was able to watch or listen to before the pandemic started. And I think that the industry didn't realize that that's what was going to happen. The industry is in a correction phase right now, getting out of this podcast bubble. And it's hurting a lot of people. And another thing that's not helping is almost every company that's involved in podcasting or content creation are all experiencing layoffs. YouTube announced in January that they're cutting 100 people from their uh, partnerships program. And I'll tell you that that directly affects how some of these channels are going to operate. I can't tell you how many times I've run into things in the past that don't really make sense because something was auto flagged incorrectly or something like that. And you call up your YouTube partner and be like, hey, what happened here? And they're like, you know what? Let me figure that out for you. And they'd contact the necessary departments and they'd come back with an answer and they'd be like, hey, you're right. We overruled that decision that kept you from being able to upload for a week because some of these repercussions are devastating. And when you don't have a person that you can actually talk to, that could really fuck with your business. And that is not cool by any measure. And the Creator Partnership Program is probably one of the most important programs that YouTube has. It keeps creators happy. I know I've called people in YouTube multiple times to fix gaping bugs that affected revenue making abilities on the platform. In fact, I think I might have even gotten someone fired or at least removed from the option to being able to talk to normal people. (laughs) It was some dev. Oh, God. Okay, here's the story. So YouTube had rolled out channel memberships, and that program is 
filled with so many bugs, or at least it used to be filled with a lot more bugs. For example, a very cool feature for podcast listeners with YouTube Premium, you're able to listen to stuff in the background while your phone is off, while you're in other apps, all sorts of cool things that kind of let it behave like an audio platform if you're just listening for audio. But guess what? If you released a channel membership video on YouTube, which is just pretty much YouTube's version of Patreon built into their platform, for some reason, even if you had YouTube Premium, that functionality went away. So it made more financial sense for the people that financially support the channel more than most other people. Now, can't experience YouTube the way they want when you're they're paying more money for it. And that bug was around, I want to say, for at least a year, maybe a year and a half. I was with my YouTube rep, and they put on one of the devs from the team, and I explained my frustrations. I was like, look, people that are paying for YouTube Premium can't use the premium features for channel membership videos, hence de-incentivizing them to be a channel member when they want to. And not only that, but you can't schedule channel membership posts. And this fucking dev tells me, why don't you just offer more perks or make it more, you know, offer more value at each tier so that it kind of negates the fact that that feature isn't available. And I was like, oh, wow, what a great suggestion. How about you fix the fucking bug and do your fucking job? And then after that, I had a call with my rep and she's like, yeah, sorry about that. That guy is, uh, what a terrible suggestion. I was reliving some trauma. Now, here's the thing. I had a YouTube contact that was there to advocate for me to the rest of the YouTube departments that I didn't have access to. What I wanted is what most creators would have wanted on that platform. And now they're starting to eliminate the people that are able to do that. If there's a time for a competitor to rise up and compete with YouTube, now would be the time. So YouTube had layoffs about 11 months ago. SiriusXM had layoffs where they laid off about 8% of their workforce. And in mid-February of this year, they announced that they're laying off another 3% of their company, which is about 160 to 170 employees. This is not good. The people that help podcasters are starting to lose their jobs. And podcasters are going to be on their own soon. And that's kind of terrifying. Because things go wrong all the time for reasons that you can't explain. Sometimes you'll get a flag on a video and it won't tell you why. It'll just say, this had to be removed because it didn't meet community guidelines. You will not get time codes of problem areas. You will not get any specific reasons. And that is confusing as shit. And it's bad. And it sucks. So look, yeah. I'm really nervous that the infrastructure that helps support podcasters are starting to dwindle. At least that's how I'm interpreting all this news. But of course, you know, this is all speculation and... This is a totally unconfirmed news. So here's the second part of the thing that's going to be affecting the next year or two for podcasts. When ad sponsors buy ads on your show, it's based on the views and the downloads that you get. How many views do you get on YouTube? How many downloads do you get on audio platforms? And then you combine that number and then multiply that by a CPM. And that's how much they pay per ad read, right? YouTube is easier to kind of figure out what the true number is because that number is public facing. Audio is a little bit different. There's no public facing place that you can get accurate audio numbers. There's a couple programs that do let you track things, but even then who knows if those are accurate numbers, right? I mean, I remember going on some of these apps and seeing what numbers they're reporting that, you know, a certain show that I produced made and just saw like these numbers are way off. Like it's like the fact that the number on the platform is way different from the number on the app that's supposed to be tracking this like it's just super off. But here's the thing about audio numbers that's always been better than video numbers. YouTube's algorithm fluctuates with variability. Who's your guest? What's your thumbnail like? What's your title? This is all information that YouTube uses to feed your shit into the algorithm. Audio platforms, as long as you're subscribed, are going to download episodes. At least that's how Apple Podcasts work. For the longest time, audio numbers were the most stable numbers that a podcast could get. In the new iOS release, that has changed. So just so I don't fudge this up, I'm going to be reading excerpts from two different things. 
uh, that demonstrate this point. Maybe I'm understanding it incorrectly, which is entirely possible. But this is from a Verge article that was written in October 2023. But the key change is that if you subscribe to a podcast, forgot about it, and returned after a while, you would have every unplayed podcast episode from that listening hiatus downloaded onto your phone. In the latest update, Apple switched it so that once you return to a subscribed podcast, it simply resumes and does not download back episodes. Additionally, it used to be that when a podcast would add old episodes to the feed, they would download on subscribers' phones as if they were new ones. With iOS 17, any episodes that are older than seven days, even ones added to back catalogs, will not be automatically downloaded. And here's more clarification from Apple's own site. Automatic downloads are paused when a device is out of available storage or when a listener hasn't played a show they follow, latest five episodes for more than 15 days to preserve device storage. That's bad news. Because I don't know about you, I have tons of podcasts in my rotation. Some are between, let's call it north of 10, south of 30. I listen to a shit ton of stuff, and I know I'm not listening to 30 podcasts a week. There's going to be some podcasts that I don't listen to for 15 plus days. So now that stops being automatically downloaded. I stop getting notified of new episodes, and it just becomes out of sight, out of mind. And those audio numbers are going to start going down. And some of them might go down so much that their ad rates now start to plummet. And some podcasts might not be able to survive that. Granted, if they're on YouTube, they're a little bit more protected. Or if they have a Patreon or a whole bunch of other things that are working for them where they've diversified their income on how they make money on this podcast, good for them. But ones that are audio only, they're in big fucking trouble. Spotify has already reported a 10% drop according to some PodTrack rankings. PodTrack is one of the softwares that help you track podcast numbers and this can just be the tip of the iceberg how many times have you gotten an update from your phone being like a new ios is available and you just keep on hitting later 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 i've done that for eight months straight one time and look maybe you like that maybe you don't as a podcast producer it's bad for business as a podcast consumer i definitely don't like that because there's a reason i'm subscribed to all of these if i didn't want to be subscribed to them or if i didn't want new episodes I would take it off my feed, but they're now making that choice for me just based off how much I could listen. I got news for you, homie. No one can listen to 30 podcasts a week. How is this good for anyone? We're thinking about saving storage on your iPhone. Get the fuck out of here, dude. That's the dumbest fucking reason I could think of for trying to make an industry crumble. Apple, I'm sure you're fucking... I'm sure you got a lot of top brass over there that's really good at their jobs. And, you know, more often than not, they make decisions where they go, hey, Paul, that's why you make the big bucks. And podcasts, which gets its name from Apple, is going to fucking suffer because of Apple. What kind of timeline are we living in, you filthy animals? I think I worked up a sweat on that. And look, I don't think this is going to affect the bigger podcasts that you listen to, um, but it's the smaller ones. It's the smaller ones that you listen to that are going to be affected the hardest by this. And, and that's what breaks my heart is that the people that can survive this will survive this. And if they make it to the other end of this, they'll, they'll be doing well. And, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. I feel like what we're watching is the podcast industry, which has been the wild, wild west for over a decade, turn into what television production studios are like i mean all i think is that the next year or two are going to be pretty rough for people that are only audio and that's my two cents too many people are getting laid off and too many adjustments are happening to reporting audio numbers and uh who knows there's probably going to be another factor coming in soon that's going to make it even more difficult to be successful as a podcast but with that i'd like to say this has been a really fun and informative episode of catching you up with. Not that it's okay. <laughs> oh, God. And I'd like to thank all the people that you're seeing on the screen right now. They're all producers of this 
channel of this episode specifically. If you would like to become a producer of this show, you can go ahead and click the Patreon link in the description below. Without the support of the producers, I wouldn't be able to put out episodes as frequently and consistently as I currently do. And you know, with all that information that I just spewed out, I would just like to reaffirm. This is a totally unconfirmed news.